If Plato is right, in order to think specifically about justice as opposed to about value or happiness or efficiency or something else, one must be thinking about who has a right to what. This view doesn't tell us who has a right to what, but with this account of justice in hand, we're well placed to sort through a huge range of debates about various issues and distinguish which ones are about justice as opposed to another moral or non-moral concern. And when it comes to debates that are about justice, we can examine what the different sides are saying about who has a right to what. Now, when you start examining discussions of rights, you'll find that there are different ideas about what exactly it means to have a right. What they have in common is the idea that having a right entails that others have obligations, duties, or responsibilities with respect to the person who has that right. These are usually called claim rights to convey that when someone has such a right, they have a claim on what others have to do or not do. When someone has such a right, justice demands that other people respect or fulfill that right, regardless of what they might want or whether respecting that right will result in the best available consequences. If, for instance, some property is rightfully yours, then even if others want your property, or if better consequences would result from them taking it away from you, you would still be treated unjustly if your property were taken without your consent. It is worth mentioning here that a sad fact of history is that people, and even whole societies, lay claim to property that is not rightfully theirs, relying on force, fraud, and theft to advance their own interests without a genuine regard to what is rightfully whose. Whether what is legally designated as your property is rightfully yours depends on the moral credentials of the relevant laws and conventions, as well as on how you and others have acted in acquiring that property. Consider the institution of slavery in the antebellum South. It seems clear that the relevant laws and conventions utterly failed to give the enslaved what was rightfully their own, their liberty and recognition as equals. In thinking further about who has a right to what, it's worth noting that groups, institutions, and countries, not just individuals, are often held to have rights to certain things. For example, rights to make collective decisions on their own, or rights to protect their own interests or rights to defend their borders. Those who believe this fall into two camps. One camp argues that groups, institutions, or countries have the rights they do only because of the rights of the individuals who constitute them. So they hold that rights properly understood always trace back to the rights of individuals. The other camp argues that groups, institutions, or countries have rights that transcend and are importantly independent of the rights of the individuals who make them up. Without taking a stand on this question, I will focus here on some standard views concerning the rights of individuals. Among the most influential views are that people have a right to be treated as equals or a right to equal protection under the law or a right to equal respect. In each of these cases, equality of something is taken to be central. But which kind of equality is at stake has dramatically different implications for what justice demands. This means that anytime someone says equality is central to justice, the next questions to ask are first, equality of what? Of treatment? of protection, of respect? And second, what does providing that sort of equality require? When you take these questions seriously, you'll find that the connection between justice and equality is more complex than it first appears. 
Beyond equality, people also, or instead, maintain that we have other rights. For instance, rights to life, to liberty, and to the pursuit of happiness. Whichever conception of rights is in play, successfully working out what justice requires starts with examining the rights of the people or groups in question and asking, who has a right to what? If you switch from that question to other questions, such as, what would produce the most happiness? Or, what does the country's law happen to require? Or, what would most people approve of? Then you've abandoned a concern for justice and may be pursuing something seriously at odds with what justice demands.